You see here the current production version of the Red Hat Cool Store, an example microservice based e commerce app containing multiple cool items. So, we want to show a real world application example, such as an e commerce, to demonstrate how OpenShift Platform nicely connects the development phase, the so called inner loop, where developers code, build, test, and ship artifacts packages inside the platform to the release deployment phase, the so-called outer loop, where CI-CD happens with secure pipelines and GitOps-driven multi-cloud deployments. And it looks like we're running out of Fedora here, so we take this as an opportunity to show how to bring a new feature for, from development to production with the OpenShift platform. In order to do that, we're going to add a new quantity of Fedoras from the Cool Store inventory service. And so to do that, let's start with the inner loop. For this demo, we created an example organization, the Red Hat Cool Store, and we store our repository on GitHubs. As you can see, those are the repository represent the microservices uh, uh, for this application. We want to enable and onboard developers on this project. And OpenShift has an excellent support for mapping user and groups from multiple identity providers such as GitHub. As a developer, once I log in into the OpenShift platform, I'm onboarded into the OpenShift web console experience. In this experience, I can self-serve to discover and scaffold templates or application from the developer catalog. Those could be pre-built or also fulfilled afterwards with customization. In addition to that, Overshift Web Console Experience offers also developer onboarding on project enhanced with Quick Start. So the Quick Start are guided path to project setup and enablement, and those are pre-built or can be also customized. In fact, for this demo, we created a specific one to onboard developers on the Cool Store app development. The Quick Start will cast through the project representing the application development environment. And within this project, we can review all the services running from the topology view. The topology view show all the services and for each service, we have a list of all details, such as the status of the app, the health of the application, the resource consumption and the list of application running, uh, internal and external networking. And so we have an enhanced support for development and production telemetry with native monitoring and observability. For each service, we can go looking at our resource consumption in terms of CPU, memory, RAM, storage, bandwidth, um, we can uh, go granularly into a time range selection, but also we can set, set up a custom metrics or alert, and we can have a list of, uh, uh, of all events happening for this service. In, uh, in addition to that, for each service, we can review the logs of the application, and this log can be uh, in single instance or can be provided in some aggregated form. Overshift provide also support for editing code. And uh, well, as, uh, watching also our quick start, we can uh, also start editing our service directly from the, from the topology view. So Overshift support the support for editing and coding with an in-browser IDE systems called DevSpaces. Dev Spaces is a, in a, is a system that creates a development environment inside the platform called Workspace. The Workspace can be created starting from a list of Workspace already available from the platform, or they can be customized at convenience. In this case, we, we have, for instance, um, uh, Workspace definition through a file called the dev file. So what we have to do is just click from this user experience on, on, uh, on this action from ed in order to edit the source code, or we can have the same experience uh, for, by calling the, this API from another source point. But once we invoke this action, Dev Spaces will start creating our workspace on how we need it, and the workspace will start 
with a, a, an overview and a get started view of action we can do. In this case, this is Visual Studio Code with uh, all our setting that we need. In this case, this is a, a Java service and we are able to program the workspace through the dev file definition. Dev file is an open standard interoperable that can be used to start workspaces into multiple um, environment. And the good thing is that you can pre fulfill action like uh, building, uh, testing, or running the continuous testing mode. In order to do our change, we can start editing our Java code. There's great support for runtime languages into the dev space. And uh, for this specific, uh, specific use case, we can start uh, editing uh, our code. Say we don't want uh, zero quantity, we want 100 quantity into the inventory. We also update our test because from the dev spaces, we can start running our unit tests. So we can uh, ensure that our software is tested within the inner loop before kicking off the outer loop and the pipelines. We can make sure that our so software is tested and it's, uh, it's, uh, it's good to go. Dev spaces also provide a really nice feature, which is the networking feature. So it can expose this microservice from the uh, outside the, the workspace so developer can share their their uh, application to other developers in, and and uh, to, to check if everything is fine as you can see in this case our fedoras uh, have been uh, um, increased to 100 quantity so we're good to go in terms of uh, coding and testing locally but before we go and we kick off the outer loop is also good to take a look of the extension availability into the, uh, the, the IDE. For this specific case, we installed this extension, the dependency analytics extension created by Red Hat in collaboration with uh, SNIC, which is able to perform vulnerability scan to the software dependencies uh, in the app. So before we start everything, we can perform such vulnerability scan and from our dependency file, and it depends of the programming language. In this case, in our POM file, we run the dependency analytics and it generates a report that we can consult locally. And this report can give us a list of uh, known vulnerability with all the details available in this case through our partners, Nick. But as you can see here, we don't have any direct vulnerability. So in this case, it looks like we're ready to go. We're ready to push our change and increase the quantity of Fedoras in the store. So we just review that our tests are up to date and the continuous testing mode validated that. So our tests are good to go and they're fine. And, and also we can, um, we can review our source code update and if everything is fine we can just commit everything and push everything so we just provide a comment for that like update the inventory quantity for fedoras to 100 that looks good to go we can push our changes into it and this action will kick off the outer loop. So we have seen how we could onboard into the Overshift platform, start watching our development environment, checking and monitoring of observability logs, and start our start our um, development phase, and start coding and testing our change before we push to Git.